All right, to take us through the day's opening calls and get us a few tips as well. Adam Dawes joining us from Shore and Partners. Adam, good morning. Good and morning. How are you this morning today? Very well. And, and you're in the office. Uh, good to see. Uh, obviously, a lot of people not, uh, certainly in Sydney. So we're still obviously waiting to see how that situation develops. Uh, all right. So um, how are you yeah. looking at uh, the likely market movements today, given Wall Street was pretty mixed overnight? Yeah, I think we, we the spies are, are quite mixed on the open today. So I, I expect it fairly quiet. And as, as you well pointed out, Sydney, uh, which does provide a fair bit of volume for the ASX, is going to be a little bit quieter today and, in fact, tomorrow as well. So we might see some subdued trading and some lower volumes going through today. But there are a couple of bigger stocks in uh, the market today that are going to provide us a little bit of activity. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, one of those, of course, we've seen the demerger from Woolworths of the Endeavour Group. Talk us through this. Yeah, so that's going to happen today. The Endeavour Group, which is the new stock code EDV, is the new stock code that will come on at 12 o'clock today for Woolworths. Um, basically, if you held a share or one share uh, of, of Woolworths, you will get now one share of the Endeavour Group. And that basically will be added to the ASX 200 as of today. So that's certainly something that's going to be uh, an interesting move going forward. But really, looking at that now, both companies... Um, Woolworths is now obviously a slimmed down company and, and, will, and, and will be able to focus more on their earnings base in the supermarket division. And, and I don't think that will, will materially change our view on Woolworths. We still really like Woolworths as a business because it is very robust and has some good uh, quality earnings. But basically, uh, Woolworths is now going to, uh, I guess, have less of that um, liquor and hotel division. Endeavour Group uh, is, represents around 24% of the group's EBIT uh, during the first half of 2021. And we expect, uh, obviously, Woolworths continue that growth going forward. But the whole reason why Woolworths has demerged this pokies gambling uh, and uh, al uh, alcohol and tobacco businesses is that they will still want to uh, be seen as ESG positive. And this is one way that they will mm. be able to do that. They still will retain a 14.6% interest in the Endeavour Group and continue to benefit from that customer uh, traffic flow uh, uh, and liquor and all of those kinds of things going forward. So really, it does materially reduce this exposure to those sort of bad products as such, and so brings that ESG poker machine uh, side of things away. We expect Woolworths to be able to sell like Wes Farmers did with Coles. We expect Woolworths to start to get rid of that 14.6% stake over the next 6 to 12 months. So there'll be a little bit overhang on the shares at the moment. But and, uh, and also, uh, to give you a bit of an idea, uh, Woolworths will be reporting on August the 26th, so we'll get a better, clearer picture of the business uh, post-demerger. So it's going to be an exciting one. Uh, Endeavour Group is, at the moment, uh, looking to sort of come on at around $8. Uh, so it'll, it'll only be a time, time will tell uh, as to what that comes on at 12 o'clock today. Yeah, Adam, do you, do you feel as though uh, this will make Woolies a little more attractive to a broader range of investors, given its skew then to satisfy those ESG requirements? And, and also, just as far as growth is concerned, yeah. in that retail space, uh, given the competition, obviously, from Coles, but also those privately held firms such as uh, Aldi, um, how are you looking at that? Yeah, so just to that sort of second point, firstly, I mean, Audi is, you know, taken a fair bit of market share, but they've come up against a fair bit of headwinds. I think they've got around 15 to sort of 20% market share now of the supermarket business. And then you've got really Coles and Woolies pretty much doing most of the other stuff with the IGA sort of, or Met Cash coming up uh, up the rear. But really, um, yes, you know, they do need to concentrate on growing their business. Um, obviously, with this pandemic and, and these sort of snap lockdowns, it does work well for the Woolworths and the Coles of this world due to the fact that people still continue to panic buy, which we don't really understand why, but they still do. And so that is certainly a positive for Woolworths and Coles going forward. I think the market share of Woolworths is always going to be maintained. They've got some fantastic store print um, and it, it looks fairly good. But you're absolutely right. This will uh, bring in a whole new uh, swag of investors. And, and it's the very large pension funds around the world that their clients say, we don't want anything to do with gambling, alcohol and tobacco. But now uh, these large pension funds around the world can buy Woolworths 
uh, in their portfolio. And I think that's what they've been wanting to do for a long time now. Mm. Obviously, the index guys have to buy it, so that's no problems. But certainly those larger pension funds. So I expect to see some volume and increased buying going into Woolworths over the next three to six months. All right. Adam, the other one you're looking at at the moment is BHP. Now, this is um, more with a skew towards its nickel production. Um, why is that? I mean, we know obviously nickel important, particularly in EV and the like. What are you looking at? Yeah, so uh, we saw BHP yesterday and, and had a good hour-long chat with them around all of their products and, and, and what they produce. And obviously, iron ore is 60% of overall earnings. So iron ore is certainly the biggest topic in there. But I thought I'd just sort of explore some of the other products or, or businesses that they have inside of that. And one of the things that they did talk about was nickel. Obviously, nickel previously with their primary, nickel's primary purpose is for production of stainless steel. But the metal also plays a key role in global transition of uh, clean energy and electronic vehicles and battery production. Now, now, nickel is a key component into the lithium battery and is used across all of those you know, all, all batteries, electronic vehicles, those kinds of things. Now, the metal, uh, nickel has, has, has rallied 16% uh, in this year uh, through the London Metal Exchange. And that broad-based uh, commodity has also helped with uh, BHP. Now, it does get mixed or, or sort of lost in the mix of, of uh, BHP's overall production. But one of the things that they did say to us is, is that they, they do not, all production now is being sold to battery uh, producers. So they're going to look to, uh, they've got obviously the Nickel West project. Uh, that, that's a fantastic business. And I think that's something that they'll look towards to help get them to that sort of uh, 2030 net zero emissions, those kinds of things, because they did talk a lot about how they're going to try and get to those environmental concerns and how they're going to work with that. So mm. I think Nickel's a really interesting story. Uh, they, they, they can continue to produce that and it will be taken up. So I think they're going to be ramping up production. The metal has worked well. Obviously, copper, Escondida, uh, there's some issues there, and I think they'll get them sorted out. But it was a really interesting conversation yesterday with BHP and gave me a lot more confidence. We've got to buy on the stock, and I really like it, and I'm going to continue to keep buying it for clients. Good one. Adam, thanks for joining us from Shore & Partners. Have a great day.